and from this we build our conversion unit. Cancel the units of measurement here. Grams can go away, and the species zinc nitrate can go away here. Now we want the molar ratio between zinc nitrate and the species we're looking for, and the species we're looking for is the same. We're looking for zinc hydroxide. Zinc hydroxide is the solid up here. The ratio between zinc nitrate and zinc hydroxide is one to one. Only one. They, the, there's no written coefficient here, but there's an implied one in front of these. So we want one mole of zinc nitrate and one mole of zinc hydroxide. The reason I put one mole of zinc nitrate on the bottom is because it matches the units and species in the step before it. Moles go away, zinc nitrate goes away. And I have moles of zinc nitrate. Now I've got to have the molar mass of zinc nitrate to get to the mass of zinc nitrate, I mean zinc hydroxide. Well, I've already done that right here. I don't have to calculate it a second time if I've already done it. If I have the equality statement here, I can just use it here. This side with the moles of zinc, zinc hydroxide goes on the bottom because it matches this unit and species. And the mass goes on the top. And we're ready to do the math. So we're going to take 2.50 and multiply it by 99.424. Hit enter and then divide by this number. All the other numbers that we have in this problem are ones, so we don't have to worry about them. Using the same process, this times this, hit enter, then hit your divide key, and divide by this number on the bottom. And I got one point Three one two 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 three one six 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 three grams of zinc hydroxide, and we're going to round that off to uh, looking at the measured and calculated numbers. Here's a measured number. Here's a calculated number. Here's a calculated number. All those. This has the least digits. Want our final answer to have that same number of digits, three, one, two, three digits. And we get 1.31 grams of zinc hydroxide. That's, the That's not the whole problem yet. Nope. All right. Now let's take a look here. We have two different masses for zinc hydroxide. We've got 1.31 grams of zinc hydroxide and 3.31 grams of zinc hydroxide. The smaller number, the smaller of those two numbers for this product is the theoretical yield. And because we have found this to be our theoretical yield, then I can go back to the beginning of this problem and see that zinc nitrate is the limiting reactant. Okay, I've identified zinc nitrate as the limiting reactant.
the smaller the two product masses. Here's a mass for a product, zinc hydroxide. We know it's a product because it's on the right-hand side of the equation. The smaller of these two masses is the theoretical yield. And when you, once you find a theoretical yield, then you back up through the problem and find the species you started with to get to that theoretical yield. And that species you started with is your limiting reactant. Okay? What now? That is a really good question. I'm surprised nobody asked that question last week. A limiting reactant is kind of what it says it is. It limits the reaction. In other words, because, the rea because we have too little of this to completely react with all of this, when this runs out, the reaction stops. And that's why the smaller number is the theoretical yield. It's like making cookies. Okay? Let's say you want to make as many cookies as you can. And you have flour and sugar and butter and chocolate chips, whatever kind of cookies you're making, okay? And you got a recipe. Well, let's say you've got out of that recipe, just for just for the sake of this discussion, let's say you've got you need a cup of each of those things. And I know a cup of butter is a whole lot of butter, but just for this, okay? So you need a cup of flour and a cup of butter and a cup of sugar and a cup of chocolate chips okay to make a batch all right suppose you've got two cups of flour and two cups of sugar and two cups of butter but only one cup of chocolate chips can you make two batches or only one batch because you run out of chocolate chips okay well the limiting reactant when it runs out can't make any, make any more cookies over here. Make sense? Yeah. So that's what a limiting reactant is. Do you write that in like the problem or something? Huh? Do you write that like in the problem or do you just like label it? You need to label it as a limiting <laughs> reactant. For right now, in this class, at this level, that's all you need to do. Okay. There's a reason for knowing that, but you won't really use it a lot until maybe you take a college class probably. Okay? All right. And we also have everything we need now to find the percent yield okay and ask you for the percent yield percent yield by definition is actual yield divided by theoretical yield actual yield divided by theoretical yield and then that number gets multiplied by 100 what you actually collect. So read the problem. Look at the problem itself. What is, what is, the, what is the amount of this product that we actually collected? <coughs> so how much? One gram. One gram. And since the problem only says it's a solid, but we figured out that solid is zinc hydroxide, the actual yield is one gram of zinc hydroxide. Does that make sense? No? The actual yield is what you actually actually collect. Read the problem. How much did we actually collect? One gram. One gram. Of what species? What is one gram of what? Zinc hydroxide. That's your actual yield. Okay? It is kind of what it says it is. It's what you actually collect. A yield is any product, any amount you get at the end. Okay? All right, so we're going to take that starting amount, or that actual yield, 1.00 grams of zinc hydroxide. So if you don't know, you just put a blank and you put grams of salt of a solid. But you, you will identify it. Okay. You have to identify it. I can't imagine any case where you wouldn't. And we're going to put it over the theoretical yield. Well, what was the theoretical yield? <coughs> yes, right there. Okay, we're going to divide those and multiply by 100. That's how you get a percent. All percents <laughs> are the fraction times 100.
And let's see, I get, oh, I haven't canceled my units here or species. Look, those cancel. A percent is always a unitless answer. Sometimes it's not a species-less answer, but it is a unitless answer. All right, so we're going to get 76.3358, 7, 7, and so forth, okay? Um, I'm kind of running out of space, but that's okay because I don't really need all that. What I need to do is to round it off to the right number of digits. How many digits do I need? Three. So I get 76.3%. And that's my theoretical yield. I mean, that's my percent yield. It's a lot of calculations, huh? We've been building up to it. Okay, in the last unit we learned to balance equations. In this unit we've been doing the stoichiometry. And this is where we've come to. This is like Mount Olympus here. Okay, we've reached the top or a K2 or, you know, whatever. I want to give you one to do for, the, you know, the whole class of practice. Okay.